It was a boy in Home Sweet Home who was very rough and tough. He was about six foot three, and he weighed like 250 pounds, buff. He ended up in the Israeli army. He's a really tough guy. His grandfather is one of the Gedele Hadar in America. And I arranged for him the day before Arab Rosh Hashanah to go to meet his Zaydi for the first time in a long time. This kid was totally not religious, Machal Shabbos Kafahesia, for eight years. He told me that he didn't fast in Kippur starting the age of 14. He's now 22, 23, totally, totally, totally gone, and has been through Gehenna, a horrible, terrible life. So I got him an appointment by his Zaydi, 9 o'clock in the morning, the day before Arab Rosh Hashanah. And I drove to Bar Park to go bring him to his Zaydi. On the way there, all of a sudden, he's talking to me. And he starts telling me, you know, it's crazy that um, my, my parents, they never hug me. My father never hugs me. My mother never hugs me. You know, my grandparents, I really, I, I appreciate them. They're really emistic of good people. They're really, you know, they're real. But, like, who doesn't hug their grandchildren? And I'm sitting here talking to this rough, tough guy, and I'm like, why is he talking about hugs? Hugs and hugs and hugs. And he doesn't hug. And my mother doesn't hug. My father doesn't hug. Who doesn't hug their kids? Who doesn't? And he's talking about hugs and hugs. So I parked the car. I went in with him to his aid. I sat at the table. And then I said, okay, I'll be back later on. I'm going to a doctor's appointment. I got in my car. The first thing I did was I called his mother. She picked up right away. It was a miracle. I said, listen, your son's telling me about hugs. You don't hug your kids. She said, listen, by us, it's very, very chassidish a family. By us, the, the mothers don't hug the, the sons over 13. And actually, in our family, the minig is that my husband also doesn't hug the boys over by mitzvah. But my husband once did hug him, actually. Once, even in the airport, in, in, in public, he once once hugged him. I said, well, what about your shver? The goyim, the gadol, the tzadik adar, one of the oldest gadolim we have in our generation today. What about your shver? She says, uh, why don't you ask him? So I was really uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do. After an hour, I went back in, and I got into the house, and I wanted to let the Zaydi know that I want to tell him something, but I didn't want it to be obvious to this kid, because then he'll know. you know. So I... The kid was, I, I came in behind him. He was like looking the other way. And I went like this to the, the gadol. You know, I have to tell you, see, I felt so bad. Anyway, so the guy got up and, and now this tough, tough kid went to say goodbye to his bubby who made him chocolate chip cookies. He was very nice. It was a very small house. I didn't have much time. And this gadol was walking. He was very shaking. He was walking very slow. And I had only a few seconds. And I saw out of the corner of my eye, she was giving him the chocolate chip cookies. She wouldn't hug him. But she was like, oh, I love you. Ah, she was like blowing a kiss. And he was waving goodbye. I had a few seconds. I just had a few seconds. So I whispered into this goggle's ear, a bengtzuch bar hug. He's yearning for a hug. And mamish on the spin of a dime, he all of a sudden just turned. And this boy was right behind him at that point. He didn't see me tell him anything. And he starts going like this. He's, a, he's, he's short and old. And he's reaching up. He's reaching up. And this boy's like, what, what, what do you want from me? He reaches up, he reaches up, and he puts his arm around his, his neck, and he pulls him down, like a, he couldn't hug him, it was like a half thing, and gives a kiss. I made believe, I made believe like I didn't see anything, and I went out, and I was going to spoil, because I don't know the cheshman of the grandfather not to give his grandson a hug, but there was a cheshman there, right? And look how he was able to change and abandon it. I got to give him a hug, he wants a hug, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against my minute. Very takes <clears throat> It takes a gadol to do that. It's not a simple thing. I get into the car, and this boy is sitting next to me. He's freaking out. And he's like, I, I can't believe it. I, 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 he's talking like this. I, I can't believe it. I can't. My Zadie. My Zadie. I said, what? He gave me a hug. He gave, he gave me a kiss. And I said to him, wow, I, I thought you said he doesn't do that. Yeah, I, I know. He never did it before. And he's talking. He's like going on and on. I can't, I can't believe it. My Zadie gave me a hug. He gave me a kiss. And then it's just quiet. I leave Bar Park and I'm going back to Home Sweet Home, which was on P and 16. So I get to Ocean Parkway. I'm going down Ocean Parkway. It's just quiet. At the light of Ocean Parkway and Avenue J, I'm at the red light. And he turns to me and he says, Avi, what do you think? Maybe I should start keeping Shabbos. So I wasn't that trained. This is before TP. This is a long time ago. And I knew. I can't say, woohoo, yes, I'm going to Ghana and then he's going to keep Shabbos. No, I knew not to do that. I didn't know what to do. So I, I had Siata Deshmaya. I told him, I said, I, I don't know what you should do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But maybe if your neshama is trying to tell you something, maybe you should listen. The boy kept Rosh Hashanah, first day, second day. He kept Shabbat Shuvah. 
He fasted Yom Kippur for the first time since he was 14. I was with him, Mila, tears by Mila, tears, tearing into the sink. He kept Shabbos again. He kept Sukkot the first days. He kept Shabbos Chalamoid. He kept Shemini Atzeres and Simchus Ter in Shul. I gave him an Aliyah. First Aliyah he had since his Bar Mitzvah. And he had Aliyah in Shul. All because of a hug and a kiss from his Aliyah. That's the power of a hug. 